Sup? No, not sup. Why are you sleeping on the job? Because I want to, obviously. Why are you getting mad at me? And if you think that's quirky... Why are you suddenly a cat? Playtime's over. Well, why not have a full game of it? Yes, a point-and-click adventure game where you're a detective who's I. I. I've done this joke before. Is an AI gremlin that talks to you in your head while the both of you examine crime scenes by clicking on everything, calling human resources over too many jokes in a police force. Do you know Nelson Mandela? Clicking on more things. Minecraft. And then jumping into a witness's brain to see their dreams to work out who the murderer is. And these people dream of such weird things. Like, why does it have to be Minecraft? Jeez. So yes, I have already made videos on this game, but one was spoiler free since I got a review code, and the other time was also spoiler free. And that didn't sit too well with me. Because this game is so good, and when I haven't talked about a game in its entirety, it eats at me inside. I just can't contain this love for a video game! However, I had this game on the Nintendo Switch. Well, this is a problem. Now that's comedy. Well, to fix that problem, I bought it again on Hang On. Did I just continue my sentence after the intro card? Well, that's not good storytelling. On PC, which continues the trends of buying multiple copies of games I like on different consoles. <laughs> But this time I have a good reason for it. It looks so high def. And also the Switch is still on fire. Now the reason why people were hyped for this game, AI colon the Somnium Files, is not because it's created by the Zero Escape guy, which are cult classics of niche puzzle games, nor the fact that it has a Fire Emblem character designer. No, it's the fact that the game is marketed by showing off one character who is a YouTuber with her own videos and tweets every week. Which may or may not be the most cryptic thing ever. And yes, these are considered canon. Which makes it even more crazy that the Japanese version of her retweeted my second video on the game. So technically, my videos are canon in the universe. But then I'm talking about the game right now. So am I the murderer? Possibly, but this niche game is so special to me because of its unique writing style and you get sucked into the multiple endings, quirky characters with emotional backstories, and murdered victims with their left eyes removed. How? Eye-opening. Was that supposed to be funny? So the game starts off with the first body of Shoko Nadami, murdered on a carousel, and you play as Kaname Date, who likes all the women, loves to sell murders, and is incredibly horny. He's <laughs> just like me, for real! And in his eye is Iba, the artificial intelligence ball, who has her own personality and can do so many things to help solve crimes, like zoom your eye, x-ray people without the consent. Her hips? Are you seeing this? What the hell? He has a Try thing for so bones? So it's the usual point and click style of game where you must click on everything to either get Tate talking about random things, read out insert clip of random thing, huh? Random thing. Random thing. I have a look. A merman. So is a wealthy politician. It is no surprise to me that he has a merman. Wait, a merman? Oh, hey everybody. I'm a merman. Or to learn more about the murder. And yes, it's all voice. Merry Christmas. It's November. And this is your boss. Named Boss? Tanuki's ball sack. And this is your best friend. Um, uh, well, what's his name? It's Kagami, sir. It's Kagami, sir. Are you serious? It's Kagami! So you get the idea, there's an insane amount of dialogue in this game, even for the most trivial of things, with the voice actors going above and beyond for a game barely anyone would know about. However, it seems as though Shoko was murdered elsewhere and brought here, and her left eye is nowhere to be seen. But Tata hears something inside the column and reveals it's a blue-haired girl named Mizuki with a bloody ice pick. Oh no, don't tell me you're the culprit. So he takes her to the hospital where Date has a strange dream. I can answer all of your queries. All right then. Who are you? This is Somnium of the Dream World. It's a major part of the gameplay. And this is a tutorial where we control Iba in a human form who can now interact with objects to break the mental locks that will help progress the game forward or just for Iba to do funny things. Amazing suction! The thing is, you won't know unless you click on everything, and you will want to because the banter between the two is amazing. Leave it to me.
Why is an AI getting drunk? So eventually you open the door to end the dream and see a woman presumably shot dead while a black haired man stands over her with a gun. Date then wakes up and heads to Abyss HQ which stands for Aubrey is salty. Or for classic fans, the old banana is Squidward team. And here you have so many things to click on. What if that pumpkin's name was Bill? Sorry, it was funnier in my head. And you sort of get a feel of these environments as you will return here on numerous occasions, and the same objects will have different dialogue each time. So don't think one click and you've done the job. You gotta develop repetitive strain injury! So Mizuki was traumatized by the murder and developed a phonia, meaning... If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. As Shoko was a mother and Shoko's divorced husband, Renju, is nowhere to be seen. Boss also mentioned how this eye thing could be related to a case six years ago, but doesn't go further into it and... Oh, that's cute. Hello. No, not hello. So yeah, Iba can do stuff on her own and anytime you see things in this view, it's what your left eye is showing. So right now we are looking at ourselves in real time. I thought I told you to stop with the wolf whistles. She tells us that a person called Odo Matsushita was the one who reported the murder. So we try to find him at his diner but only see his adorable mother who says that he has an obsession with an internet idol and even bought a figurine of her. So we head to her idol company. Oh yeah, if you're wondering, idols are a big thing in Japan where they are like pop stars, usually in a group with an insane amount of following. This group is Lemniscate, which is owned by Renju, and in the lobby we see Ota waiting for his goddess Iris to finish off a podcast. Tessa is recording a podcast today. And and when you spew out information the way you do, which is very <laughs> impressive. Yay! However, with Iba hacking Otis' computer, we find that he's actually running three Twitter accounts, insulting Iris on one, while defending her on his main, essentially creating fake drama and being her white knight. I have one word for you. So we use this as blackmail that we will tell Iris about the fake drama he created if he doesn't cooperate. Oda then recounts how he went with Mizuki to the scene, as she wanted a bodyguard since she got this message from someone to go there at night. They then saw the body causing the manly Otis to run away screaming, leaving the 12 year old alone with her dead mother. You sicken me. Aset, which is Iris' stage name, then appears pulling the old blackmail card, begging us to take her to the scene of the crime. Okay, fine, let's go. What? And Indians use the left too. Um, Mr. Date? Shouldn't you keep your eyes on the road? I guess his left eye is doing this while driving. Don't worry about it. I'm a professional. I'm going to die. What? <laughs> Just kidding! So we learn that Iris got a job being an internet idol thanks to Renju's friendship with her mother. Internet stars do better if they don't sell out. Yeah, they shouldn't really promote their Patreon in the middle of a video where you can help this YouTuber who puts too much work into editing these videos to continue to do so, and get access to high quality thumbnail art, or even use the code RAMSES in the Epic Games Store checkout. Holy moly, she plays Shovel Forge! I don't know what that is. Shovel Forge is a game in which you manipulate cubes on the terrain to build structures. So we arrive at the crime scene. A black and white bear? I'm not gonna be punished, am I? What are you talking about? <laughs> Nothing. Just thinking about a game I like. Oh wait, she's a Danganronpa fan? So we learn that the whole area is actually restricted, as 8 years ago, there was a chemical plant explosion causing everyone to be evacuated while it was being decontaminated. Iris then collapses from GAMER BRAIN, and Date gives her a piggyback and finds out her weight is 105 pounds, which is very important in the game. Jot that down in your notes. And also, that's 47 kilos to us normal people. So we drop her off home and her mother... I think he's saying he likes older women. All right, Date, play it cool. You're in an attractive single mother's house. Play it cool. You are beyond perverted. So if you remember, dear viewer, this is the woman Date dreamt about. Shot with a heart. Lead. Her name is Atomi and yes, yeah, she's clearly fine and works as an elementary school teacher who also met Renju in high school. And interesting to note, she can't seem to use her right arm. Well, we return to Abyss to see Mizuki is out of the hospital, but still mute. And Boss says that we should sync with her. Yeah, so Boss, Pewter, the tech wizard, and us work at Abyss, where we use a sync machine to go into a person's subconscious to find things they are hiding related to crimes, and this might help cure Mizuki's PTSD or give us clues on the murder. <laughs> 
Now in this Somnium we get our first hurdle being a time limit, as we have to leave within 6 minutes, otherwise the host's brain corrupts your own since the body can only hold one consciousness. Frankly, 6 minutes is way too long to be running around in someone else's dream. This also means any actions you do, use up time, while standing still pauses it and you gotta be picky on what Iber can do. You wanna do it in 6 minutes or perhaps you wanna click on everything yes, for the meme. Are. Yes you are. What are you doing? I have come to the world of Somnium to play with dogs. But if you run out of time, the mental locks act as checkpoints. You also get these things called timies after actions, which say on the next action you use one, it lowers the time used by a fraction of it or becomes a set time of 10 seconds and so on. Later on you get negative timies that add time to actions and these are all mostly random, meaning you can either get a good or bad run. Which is fun for gameplay tension, but horrible for speedrunners. Oh, there's only three speedruns of the game. Now surely that will tell you how niche it is, or the fact that the Switch port has its own category and it's double the length. How do you run games? So the Somnium has become a mixture of trial and error, where you most likely will reset because the funny stuff in the game is just too tempting. But why must I commit seppuku? And in Mizuki's one there's a split, meaning depending on the birdcage you pick, the universe changes. Yeah, it's like how if you decide to follow that one risque cosplay on Instagram, it leads to a timeline where you're opening the app on the bus, your front page becomes incredibly awkward for that granny sitting next to you, compared to the other universe where your follow list is completely safe and you can browse it without having to worry at all because your feed is safe and family friendly. Wow, nice thighs! And in this one, I decided to pick the balloons, or as Iva calls them, with blown up rubbers inside. Would you please not call it a rubber? This flings off the merry-go-round as we see Iris's frozen corpse with stab wounds, her right eye missing, all the while hearing Mizuki being abused by her mother on the speaker phone. Yeah, I forgot to mention. Horrible parent! But we cured Mizuki's muteness, right? Oh, she still can't talk. Huh, that's actually different to my first playthrough, where I picked the other cage and she could talk. So I guess this time I'll be experiencing the story differently, and all of this can be seen on the flow chart, as the aim of the game is to go through all the routes to eventually find the true ending, which will probably involve Date at a strip club or something knowing him. So Date, remembering what he saw, calls the gamer and tells her to wait there, don't answer the door for anyone, since that could be a vision of the future. She says yes, okay, only if we go on a date with her tomorrow. You really have to bargain with everything, huh? Yep. So us and Iba go back to the park and find a rental phone inside the horse, meaning old Nella here had a craving for an apple. Because horses like apple? And Date asks Iba to call that one number on it. My name is Kaname Date. I'm with the Metropolitan Police Department. Are you an idiot? They hung up. Oh, you think so? So Date goes to check on Iris, who is completely fine. Hop, hop, rabbit goes hop. And tells us to watch her stream at 1am. Oh no, don't tell me you're doing those cursed 1am challenge streams. Shake! Sit! Anyway, back at Abyss, boss says Renju has been found. Finally! I mean, you would think after his daughter found her dead mother's body, he would at least, you know, turn up somewhere. And he has. In a car crash and is now in hospital. Also, boss mentioned that the person who called on the phone probably isn't the killer since they called after the murder. Well, okay, let's visit Renju. Except he escaped the hospital. The man really doesn't want to see his family, huh? So Tate calls Lemnisgate's office to see if they Let know me hear anything. Your message. Thank you. She says he might be at Sunfish Pocket, a maid cafe Renju owns. Dude's living out the weeaboo dream, huh? However, we decide to check up on Mizuki at home. Uh, Mizuki? <laughs> Seems like Hitomi is Mizuki's teacher and stayed with her overnight, which helped her get over the euphonia. Date, I'm sorry. I looked inside your fridge earlier. Why do you have so much meat in there? Oh, I'm on a diet. You see, I'm... I'm a recovering vegetarian. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap, she laughed at my terrible jokes. So Date, seeing his chance, blasts her with x-ray beams. His left eyeball can seriously harm a lot of people. And finds that she has a metal plate in her shoulder, indicating she was shot at six years ago. And Mizuki finally being able to speak, Goosebumps. says it was Renju who asked her to come to the park and given her family situation, she thought he was finally acknowledging her and that's why she listened. Because as you see, Mizuki is sort of like not officially Date's adopted daughter because Renju is a worthless slob and Shoko is an alcoholic.
and also dead. So Tate offered to take care of her, which is why she lives here unofficially. Well, okay, let's head to that maid cafe Renju owns. Oh my god, they're still selling DVDs! So inside we find... Ota? Uh, mm -hmm. And these are the mermaids. Ha, I get it. Whose job is to make the customer feel good by sucking Amazing them dry suction. of money. How many times have I told you to cut the bones properly? And Ota tells us that he hasn't been able to contact his waifu, as during her 1am stream... She heard someone at the door and stopped the stream. She also hasn't answered any calls all day. So we go to our informant Mama who runs a pretty empty bar and she says to go to the Kamakura Yakuza gang as there are rumors they had financial connections to Shoko. Date walks in, beats up the henchman and asks the leader Moma some questions. He however doesn't answer since we are a cop. And yes, we are that, but a super cop with a robotic eye. And using the x-ray, we find his most prized possession behind the safe. And no, it's not money, guns, or the 2002 FIFA World Cup trophy. No, it's a figurine of ASAP. Oh god, another one! So he says how the old leader of the gang, Rohan, was arrested six years ago for shooting someone in their home, but was tried as insane and last year killed himself. Momo then admits to having financial involvement with Shoko, but nothing to do with the murder. In fact, they were out golfing during the incident. However, if we want info on Renju, we have to bring Aset to him. Gee, being an internet star in this world sure seems rough. So in the car we go, where Iba discusses how we should have a self-destruct code just in case because, you know, she is super secret military top grade super secret. Date agrees since he doesn't want anyone to know his deepest thoughts. So fluffy. So they set a number code followed by a second code where Date will tell a lie to blow her up. Date then reminisces how he doesn't have any memories from six years ago, and the first one being him meeting Boss on the street, who doesn't take him to the hospital, but just says, hey, you work for Abyss Dummy, get back to work. Well, I guess going back to the old clues, the two retry that number on the phone, but this time play it a bit more cool. You're an imposter. And she traces the voice to Congressman So. So what? Oh, so! So, Sajima! But before we knock on the politician's door, a policeman says he got a call from someone in prison named Number 89, who says he knows who killed Shoko, and will only give the answer if we meow like a cat. Meow. Haha, <laughs> made you meow. Nah, if you let me go free, I'll talk. Kinda weird, but we'll put that on the back burner as we head to So's house. However, he's protected by manly bodyguards. Look, a grandma! Look, a porno mag on the floor. Wah! So he says he did call Shoko but won't elaborate, just like a politician. And just like one, he sneaks out while his bodyguards give us the 35th Amendment, the right to get beaten up by a politician's bodyguards. Uh. Iber then tracks his location down to the Okiura Fishery Warehouse, which is owned by Renju's dad. I swear, his family seems to own everything in Japan. And we see So leaving and driving off. Iber then randomly goes, hey, I'm running out of battery, so leave me in the car to charge. What convenient timing. And inside we see something hidden by a white cloth that it's... Iris. There she is, just like Mizuki Somnium predicted. Driving back to Abyss, Date asks Boss to drag So in for questioning while calling for backup to check up on the body. And arriving at HQ, Date interrogates the politician. Do you honestly think you can get away with this? Funny, I was gonna ask you the same thing. Holy Date, you sound so hot when you're not horny. Which is like 2% of the time. Porno man! We take it all back. So this becomes another gameplay section of sorts, where you gotta pick the right evidence to present. It isn't like other investigation games, there's no real penalty. However, they do voice the descriptions of each item, which is so helpful. Look, I just really like voice acting in games, and it's amazing here. Otherwise, you're just reading words non-stop. That's the, that's the fastest way to put me to sleep. And so is still being tight-lipped, and says he never stabbed Iris. Aha, you fool! I never mentioned the cause of death. All right, boss, let me do it. You've got it. Sync with him. So this Somnium is kinda crazy. Leave it to me. Guess it's still gonna be years before we ever get robots doing our food delivery. Delivery! Well, it shows Iris getting stabbed repeatedly on loop, which would indicate that so is the killer. Maybe? And well, we have to try and help Iris escape that killer by doing all these actions to let her run free. 
Well, we say virus, but that doesn't really prove so was a killer, right? I mean, it's just a dream. People dream of all sorts of weird things. Why, last night I dreamt the... Ah, but why, why am I telling you this? All you need to know is that the policeman who went to the warehouse couldn't find a body. It's not there. And Iba couldn't record our vision due to charging, so basically, everybody thinks Dante is crazy. Well, only one way to check. We rushed to Iris's house and oh, she's totally fine. So we are crazy? Well, kind of. As Date insists that him saving Iris in the Somnium changed reality to a new timeline where she's alive. Yeah, right, buddy. Boss, you believe me, right? You know, the kanji for chair comes out to strange mushroom. Makes me think of a man's strange mushroom. Uh, if you boss. black coffee puts hair on your chest. Does it now? And somewhere lower. Hello, HR. Well, driving away, Iba says she finally worked out who number 89 is. A man called Falco. And we go back to So to question him some more, but he dodges the question, saying he doesn't like us and asks us to leave. Well, we go back to the marble bar. Sorry, I don't like golf. And here we get a flashback showing how Renju worked for the Kumakuras in high school. Yeah, don't think we forgot about him. This route is pretty much where, where in the, the world, world is Renju? Renju? We then ask Itomi about him and she says, I do not know. But we learn her past, how at 19 she raised Iris, who loves to sing and dance, and also how Itomi fell in love with a criminal who she found injured at a shrine. Iris also liked this man so much so that she wanted him to marry her lonely single mother and become the dad she always wanted. However, six years ago, a gunman broke into the house to finish the job, which is where Hitomi got shot, jumping in the way, and both the attacker and her boyfriend and got arrested. Well, that's heavy. Uh, let's lighten it up with a trip to the Lemnis Gate. I don't need it. I don't need it. I like guys that like New Guinea fruit bats and yellow spotted neck turtles. Oh. That's enough. I'll come right out of your eye socket if you don't stop. I'm serious. I'm going to pop out! Iba flew out of my eye and started dancing on the desk. The receptionist immediately fainted. Iris saw the whole thing and also fainted. And so my story ended. Wait, that's the bad ending? I just wanted a number! <laughs> Also, it's really cool how all the models react even if you aren't talking to that person. You know, just like in real life, they don't all stand in one spot, you gotta be turning your head to talk to people. It helps make the characters feel way more realistic. Which is why, despite having the 3D model in the bottom left, I personally found myself looking at the character in the world more. Like I was really talking to them. Oh, why isn't she real? For sure. Iris is also mad at us. Objection! Cause we ignored her date. But we go, your phone was off. Objection. All right, fine. Where do you want to go? He, he, <laughs> no, we are not playing Minecraft. I mean, Shovel Forge with you. She says, fine, just take me around town. We also decide to tell her, I don't know why, it's kind of weird, that we saw her dead body. But then, like, we saved her in a dream, and now she's alive. Normally, people would go, well, what the hell? but she is like, wow, that's so cool. Maybe you were in a parallel world or something. But then she has to go do Game of Things and record a podcast. Do you know Nelson Mandela? This isn't a real conversation that's happening right now. Well, we head back and Boss has some good news. She brought number 89 in for questioning, so we can ask him about Shoko. Number 89. Your real name. I don't know, I forgot. Man, there's like too much testosterone in this room right now. Djibouti. So we ask what he knows, but he says let him go first. We say, lol no. So he slams the desk into us, grabs our gun, which I forgot to mention looks badass, takes Pewter hostage, and makes for the exit. Later Pewter recounts how an 89 got into a waiting car, driven by Renju. Seriously, this dude is doing everything he can to not see his daughter. Momo then calls saying how he saw Renju, but would only tell us where if we bring Iris. Oh crap, we were meant to meet her after the podcast. Oh my god. Gosh! Late, 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 late! You're late! Why are you like this? So we take her to Moma, who naturally but freaks sorry, out. Sorry, Moma. I don't like gangsters. 
And he says that Renju was at the maid cafe, so we go there and you probably notice that anytime I visit an area, I crack my knuckles and proceed to click everything to get all the new funny dialogue. I recommend doing it before you talk to the characters, since you might be forced to move on to the next area once done. Anyway, Mizuki is here, since no one is babysitting her, as we are running around. Yes, I'm sorry Mizuki, we gotta solve the murder. I'm not angry. And we also learn that Iris used to work here and was friends with the mermaids, how her dancing helped her get the job at Lemniscape. And at everyone's request, she goes up to perform her hit song, Invincible Rainbow Arrow. So they say Renju was looking for Iris when he came here yesterday. Dota gets his bone wow. fix. Those are some gorgeous hips. And we head to the shrine where Iris almost collapses again. And she discusses the man she calls uncle, who is Satomi's boyfriend. And that he was the one who suggested her stage name, Aset. And she wanted to be an idol so that he might return if she was famous enough. And if he counted how many times I said and in a sentence, you are paying too much attention to my voice and missing the many funny things that are happening on screen. Which one is Booba? And which one is Kiki? Then the two go to the warehouse where Date explains sinking to Iris, like how the machine sends cables around your left eye into the braid, which is so incredibly creepy to me. That sounds kind of romantic. How the heck is that romantic? Iba also discusses how she uses the Wadjet system, which is sort of like the Google of this world, which it controls all the tech. Iris, though, seems worried at this. And so we finish the weird date where we end up at Oda's diner, where he cooks for us while we explain explain Iris's resurrection to Ota. And Iris is like, yep, that's parallel worlds. Yep. And we get a really in-depth explanation on it. Like extremely in-depth, Uchi, you have been reading those Wikipedia articles in depth. But the best explanation was the 100 million balls. Or if you get one chance to pick up the ball labeled one in a box of 100 million balls, you have no chance on the first try. But if 100 million people tried, one of them would get it. So it's like multiple universes, multiple versions of you. One version of you would have picked the ball. They also play rock, paper, okay, scissors to go. show the different outcomes. One, two, three, shoot! Good old rock, nothing beats that. God damn it, this sucks, let's leave. So they head back to Marble but get ambushed on the street by a masked gang who starts shooting at them. What the hell, this ain't a movie? We're gonna die! However, Iba overclocks the CPU to find the optimal plan, which is to shoot the hanger to drop women's underwear and the adult magazine vending machine to distract the men while shooting a fire extinguisher to knock them all out. Did I mention this game sometimes isn't too realistic? So this also is a small mini game where you have to press a random button and then hold the cursor in the zone till you blast your shot. And it was infinitely easier on the PC in my personal non-esporting opinion. Date then takes Iris back to the apartment, but Iris says the only reason she asked for the date was secretly for him to bodyguard her. Oh, because you have crazy idol fans? No, silly tee hee, there's a secret society called Nizet Laws who are controlled by the Wadjet system to launch the X00639 satellite, and the Wadjet system is alien technology that crash landed on Earth in its quest to conquer the universe, and because they discovered all this, they want to silence me. Iris. What the fudge are you talking about? And Iba is like, oh my god, girl, you crazy. Then Iris goes full tin hat mode where she says Wadjet caused all of the Earth's problems. It's true. I found this all in the dark web. It's where you enable dark mode on websites. Yeah, uh-huh. Sure. But it's true. Believe me. So Iva suggests a sync with her to see if Iris is lying. Well, in we go. Oh no, it's the Minecraft world. Be sure to like and subscribe. So yeah, it's not really Minecraft, but you do get to dig blocks, craft items, fight zombies, and see Iris Let's Play the Game. Is it on the wiki? Check. So it sort of pushes you to listen to Iris' screaming about protecting her from the knives, which involves using the power of dance. Ha. Ha. So listening to Iris and not Iba, you believe the conspiracy and agree to be her bodyguard, which has you learning about the men who shot at you and they are the Yakuza. And also the game will show these flashbacks through Iba's vision, which is cool that you can turn your head during this since it's all an engine, but it does like the game loading the video. Anyway, more investigating. Hey, Date, do you want this poster? No, not really. You know, if you rub the swimsuit with a coin, you can scrape it off. I'll take it. Including back at Sojima's house. All island is Kojima in Japanese. The director Kojima? 
He's here? Ah oh, yes, hello. Please play my game Death Stranding 2 on the PlayStation 5. And we learned that the only person who knew that we were at Marble when the guys attacked us was Pewter. Yes, the nerd betrayed us. As it turns out, he's Renju's lover and was the one who gave Renju his favorite watch. This is the wristwatch Renju always wore. So we confront Pewter and he says he only did this to help Renju, including aiding 89 escape custody. However, he is the creator of Iber. And he kidnaps Iris, thankfully though, Oma had given her a GPS tracker, just in case something like this would happen. And we find that they are holding her at those warehouses with a small army. By the way, if you're having trouble progressing, the van is all the way in the back that you have to click on. But thankfully, we won't have to do it alone, as the Sims and Mizuki come to help. Well, I don't know what Mizuki can do. Yeah! Oh, so that's why she's so strong. She grew up watching Naruto as a kid. <laughs> All of this while Date Last proceeds night. to shoot the guards. You picked up something else, didn't you? I told you, don't act innocent! I'm talking about the panties and bra you shot down in Golden Yokocho. I needed it as evidence! Enough with your pathetic excuses! Just aim under the container. That's where the voice acting in this game is outstanding. I wouldn't love the game as much as I do if not for the voices. Also, I thought I would just show you what happens if you somehow manage to die here. Dante! 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 Anyway, we free Iris and take her to the shrine, where she talks more about her uncle and that his name was Falco. Yep. 89 was Hitomi's lover. She also says what happened during a live stream where Renju knocked and was badly injured, begging for her help, and he drove her to the exploded chemical plant, but Iris got frightened and ran away and doesn't know what happened to him. So we head to that plant and find a prototype sync machine, the test version, the only other one in the world apart from the one at Abyss. However, Iris collapses and Iba says her brain is failing, she will die in minutes. So Date tries to sync with her on the machine, and oh come on, Minecraft! again? Dream about something else. So we solve it by making a star with the lights and wake Iris up to sweet merciful where's her eye? And thus she dies while the credits roll for the Iris ending. Well, that's been AI the Somnium Files. Okay, now I mentioned there's multiple routes and to get the full story, you need to go back to places where the path split and pick the other choice. Well, I don't want to go too far back, so let's go to that first Minecraft stage, where we will now ignore Iris and all her conspiracies, which involves us actually breaking the game to go out of bounds, and they hint even though the path splits here, the actual split is way back here, where you build something else. This is what tripped me up when I played this game with the review code, because there were no guides out at the time, which caused me to run around cluelessly for two hours and running around as this Iva ain't fun. Can we be rational and look at my feet? I won't do it! Anyway, we don't believe Iris because wow, now that you explain it, yeah, Nice does seem silly. Gee, thanks game for telling me that. No, Nice are real. Oh yeah, now that you explain it. And she gets mad we vote listen and walks off. We then talk to Hitomi about Iris and she explains why she might be acting like that. Oh, let me guess. Too much video games? I know that's usually the reason. Iris has a malignant brain tumor. Oh. Uh. Well, it does explain why Iris collapsed so many times, and I guess why she is hallucinating if something is affecting her brain waves. Also explains why she died in that last route. However, we get a call from Oda saying that Iris ran away, leaving a note behind, saying that she is with the person she trusts the most, which is probably that scallywag Renju. So we check his usual places before ending at the warehouse, and Iber notices a body, and inside the forklift we find her frozen corpse once more. See, Iber, I told you I wasn't crazy. And so, oh, the game blocks us? I guess this is so we don't play ahead without some knowledge from the other routes. So I guess all the way back to Mizuki's dream and picking the other cage. Well, continuing Date's epic quest for MILFs, this route doesn't show Iris's corpse, but rather... Um. And now apparently this sink helped cure Mizuki's muteness. I told you I'm fine. So annoying. I'll say, hey, pewter! Aren't you evil? No, that's in the other timeline. Hopefully. So we take Mizuki to the park to learn about a clue on the blue man, who probably used the car to get here, and looking at the surveillance cameras, it's Ranju's car. No, no, not him again. Well, guess we better check at his usual spots. How about the maid cafe? What? Oh, jeez, oh, lordy, no, why? 
<laughs> we spent a whole route chasing him and now he's dead? Quite brutally too. So now both of Mizuki's parents have been murdered by this serial killer, both left eyes removed. This reminds boss that there was another serial killer six years ago, the original Cyclops killer, who killed four women and removed their right eye, which is different to the new Cyclops killer since they aren't all female victims and it's the other eye being removed. So we go to investigate Renju, however Mizuki sneaks in the car, yeah even though both her parents are dead, she wants to know who killed them and isn't running away. You have no tact do you? This is why you're single and always will be. She's quite the character. So we arrive at the crime scene. What's your name? Seriously? It's Kagami. Stop bugging him, it's rude. Excuse you? My best friend, uh, Kagami and I are having a conversation. Yeah, don't spoil our fun. What? And we learn that Renju was moved here after death and was strangled while sedated. So you don't have to be a big person to do this. And we also find out his weight as well as the weight of the barrels. I remember when I brought up Iris's weight. See, the elevator only recorded a specific total coming up here. I told you. See? So the two then try to find Ota by going to Lemnus Escape. Oh, what? Hey there, handsome. I don't know, I think she might be my favorite character in this game. You never think about, like, my boss getting murdered, you know? Hey, that's my dad you're talking like, about. You I also love how this game portrays you thinking random thoughts about any objects you see. Because, yeah, admit it, you do this. Captain, enemy vessel, three clicks. But now you got a super smart AI listening to it all. So we head to Marble to learn more info on Renju, but Mama isn't here yet. Well, I guess we can talk to Mizuki. It's pretty normal nowadays. You... you haven't kissed anyone yet, have you? No, I'm not interested in that. Oh, thank God. Where Mama comes in to say that Renju has ties to the Kumakura gang, and I'm mentioning this again because the game does double up with knowledge as some players would try this route first, so they have to say it twice. However, I do like how you learn this knowledge in a different manner to the Iris route. Anyway, we go to the Kumakuras where we see a cigarette recently lit and x-ray the door. Ooh, there's someone hiding in the closet. And it's not that, eh? <laughs> and after taking out the goons, what the hell, a minigun? We get more reaction time. Date. A porno mag at your feet. What? So it's so, so, so we learn that the gang would work with Renju as well as so. Then while leaving, we get that 89 phone call. While Iba weirdly Mom. mentioned something about Date's dosage. You must have increased your dosage too much. My dosage? Well, we go back to talk to Ota. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Talk to Ota. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I turned 36 this year. You know what, screw it, let me just ask her out. Oh, but there is one little thing you should know about me. I'm a reptilian. What? So Ota is like, Iris, your music saved me, and that she couldn't have murdered Renju, but she, like a witch, hears her name and suddenly appears. Gotcha, let's go, interrogation. And she says, no, I didn't do it. But you gotta admit, the sedation, the weight, the fact that you're a Minecraft YouTuber, it's really possible you killed them. And she acts kind of strange here, more sedated and less. Lay, 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 lay. However, we also see in the mirror she's texting Ota during all this, he mentioning how he won't tell us about the thing. And this is enough reason for boss to say the magic words sync with her you really like saying that don't you boss tanuki's ball sack so this time a somnium ain't minecraft it's this weird blank room with eerie music what was that just now don't worry though if you're thinking this game is getting serious aiba what are you doing in a place like this i'm taking care of date he's so troublesome oh I understand. It's kind of weird how Iris knows about all these chemicals and guns. So we see the blue person kissing a body with So's head on it. What the hell? Did that happen in reality? Not necessarily. I'm sure you've had dreams of kissing celebrities and porn stars, right? No. Definitely no. So we take Iris back to Ota who said he would talk about the thing, but he knocks us out with a frying pan. Thankfully Iba recorded everything as a two run off with Mayumi chasing after them. And five hours later we awake, but out of nowhere the boss says that the new Cyclops killer is live streaming the next murder while wearing... Oh no. It's the polar bear. That thing has haunted my dreams for so long. However Ota is there fighting off the costume killer. Oh yeah, it's not a real bear. Just the costume. Or is it? 
and we rush to them finding Iris unconscious but alive, with the bear missing and Ota suffering a stab wound. So time to investigate the place where we learn that Ota drove Iris in his van. Yes, he's 24, he has a license, just in case you were wondering if he's verticality said otherwise and the other vehicle was a station wagon that we learned Ota stole and also drove here so it's like they stopped at a gas station where the polar bear bear jacked the van and drove Iris here and Ota then gave chase after stealing a station wagon and in the corner of the warehouse we find a special chocolate bar that we learn was bought by Mayumi Ota's mum as Ota collected those as a kid now what's it doing here if she brought it? I mean, she did follow the two last night. Mayumi, however, seems to think Ota isn't injured and her dead husband is still alive, as Aiba reveals she's suffering from dementia, which is so heartbreaking. The diner has actually been closed for eight years due to the chemical plant explosion, but she kept running it thinking everything was fine. Also, by the way, the game does let you explore these sections in any order, but I recommend doing it in order because you get things like showing Mayumi the chocolate you picked up. Date then continues his investigation. That's trespass you know my baseball landed in your backyard i was just trying to get it back and we head back to mizuki who begs us to let her come along but date goes you aren't strong enough i guess you don't remember the other timeline where she knocked out an entire gunned army with a metal pipe and we get a flashback to how mizuki got bullied in school but date trained her to fight and she shows off her skills <laughs> What is up guys, YouTuber here. You watch weird videos when I'm not around, don't you? Weird videos? Something about cuckoldry? No, <laughs> no, no, no. So we meet Ota in the hospital and he's clearly enjoying being a hero. And he says he didn't see the person in the bear costume. And that also the thing he was keeping secret about Iris was that he saw her driving Renju's car the night he died. And she told him to keep it a secret. Well, glad that's the only secret. <laughs> Hang on, kid. Why do you have a knife? He struggles and boss knocks him out saying the magic words and we go into his somnium. Oh god, no. Nah, just kidding, yeah. Just joshing yous. It's this one, where Ota acts like a superhero trying to save the day. And depending on your actions, you'll lead him to fight the bear. However, he still gets stabbed with what's shown to be his mother's knife. Well, okay, so Mayumi's the killer? But when we interrogate her, she confesses to it, but doesn't seem to know the details. Like she's covering for her son. So we try and sync with her, but Peter goes, no can do. A brain machine can't be used that quick. So we drive around and discuss, well, Mayumi definitely didn't stab her son, and Ota would never pull out Iris's eyeball. Consider the possibility that Iris killed Shoko and Renju. Then, this whole thing was to get her off the suspects list. That's why she pulled out her eye and had Ota stab himself. It makes it look like there's another criminal involved. I will repeat myself in saying that this is only a theory. A game theory. I will also say the game goes to great lengths to talk about all the possibilities, like why they didn't dump the polar bear outfit into the sea, as in they try really hard and think of things a player might question and answer any queries. And at the diner, Ota tells us how his parents worked to keep the place open after the explosion, but there were no customers. So they worked other jobs just to send Ota to college, and due to overwork, his father died. Oda, however, dropped out to be a writer. Mayumi supported his decision, but then forgot about it. And Ota yelled at her as he didn't know about her dementia. This is so sad, and of course it's proof that uh, none of them are the killers. So they go back to the cars to wonder how Mayumi could have driven this to drop the chocolate here. Turns out there was a taxi on camera, and the driver is back at Lemon Escape. I've spoken this way all my life. My parents speak with the same vernacular. Oh no. British? Steak and oven chips, which were very good. So he has the memory of an elephant. Elephant. Yeah, that. And how Mayumi ordered him to follow Iris, where she bought the chocolate at the same time Oda stole the wagon, meaning she couldn't have carjacked Iris. And before the taxi dropped her off at the warehouse, the van actually made a pit stop at So Sejima's house. So we got to once again talk to that slimy politician. But first... Huh? I can't hear you. Oh, you asked me out before, didn't you? But it's kind of complicated. I told you, I am reptilian. But you were just joking, right? No, I'm serious. I only eat vegetables. I am fairly sure she means vegetarian. 
Wait, no, that it. Don't sit back down. I don't care if you're vegetarian. So we go there, but strangely, no bodyguards, only the smell of blood. And in the vase we see, oh dear lord, he got jangered. So his left eye missing and no one around, Iber says his wife died years ago and his son reportedly living abroad. But thankfully to get away from here, Pewter says the machine is ready to sink with Mayumi. And so we go through her memories and I don't want to detail it because it's sad, it's really sad. Yes, I did cry a lot, okay, but all I'll say is that. Make Let's sure you put Iba's face, face in into the cake. It doesn't fall off. Well, I don't know, maybe you don't like cake? How about mop buckets? So you learn that no, this is a very loving family under very sad circumstances with the explosion causing zero business, plus the death and sickness, none of them have committed the murders. So you visit the two in hospital as they make up, and Date leaves them to their new found joy. Wait, the end. Well, that barely explained anything! No, I'm just sad. Oh wait, before it ends, Iba gets new evidence, doing the enhanced meme, on a recording after Iris left, showing her grabbing the knife off Mayumi, and the second piece of evidence, inside Renju's intestine. They found... Shoko's left eyeball. Well, time for another route! So yeah, this means going back to superhero Ota, and going the other way to save him. This causes Ota to somehow hook the bear's leg, damaging the left thigh, but he still gets stabbed. Which means the criminal has a limp. Alright, time to investigate. I've been watching you. Ghost! So yeah, back home we see Mizuki off school for morning because yeah, both her parents are dead. However, Mizuki wants to come investigate because she won't rest until she knows who did it. And so we take her to the first crime scene. Daddy was on the outside taking pictures of me and mom. Yeah, that's great Mizuki, but I gotta click around for the funny dialogue. Mizuki starts to blame herself for her parents getting divorced, which led them to getting killed while Date gets a flashback to drinking with Shoko four years ago. Where she? One little slap. Are you hitting your kid? Yeah, I uh, hate boss. Do we have to solve her murder? Also, we hear from Renju. I can't take even a single second out of my day to deal with a kid. Okay, I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna say it. You two are both awful parents. Piece of fucking shit. Hop, hop, rabbit goes hop. So we learn that because Shoko is a horrible mother and Renju is just busy with work, no one took care of Mizuki. So that's when Chad Date stepped in for her and it's great because they really see more dad daughter than, you know, where in the world is Renju. Mr. Bell? Mrs. Bell. I see you two are getting along well. So to the warehouse where we discover the blood pool has two sets of blood, and if they analyze it, it might match the killer's limping leg DNA. But we need to find someone limping. So let's ask around someone who would know a lot of people. Salt provision. Wait, are you serious? Do I look like I'm joking? Date, you're being annoying again. Do you know how angry I can get, Date? Let's go to a Tommy. Uh, okay. I took her hand. I left Iba behind. And thus ends the case. We live the rest of our lives with a receptionist who I don't even know, know the name of, but it's such a perfect ending. It's definitely not a dream. Not a dream. Not a dream. <sighs> Ah crap, it's the bad ending! My disappointment is immeasurable. So we and Mizuki head to the cafe to find more clues. Which one is your type, Date? Where is this coming from? Just tell me. Well, let's see. Wow, you're really thinking about it? Disgusting. You asked! He's just like me for real. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, <laughs> scaredy cat. <laughs> Laughing at me. Yeah, because it was funny. I'm going to expose your browser history. Hey, take it easy now. So we dropped Mizuki off at HQ for daring to try that. Ugh. 
Jeez. As Kanaiza has info on the blood, which confirms that it's from two different people, Ota, and the other is someone not on file. However, outside we see, hey, wait, it's so! And oh god, he's gonna live! Also, why is he here? Admiring the sea breeze? Well, he drives off and we need more proof to convict him, like DNA, which might be on that cigarette he had in the Yakuza office. And we go grab it from them, which confirms that yes, he is the killer. However, boss stops us and so is so politically powerful with the police, we can't arrest him. Gee, what a surprise. Date complains and the boss takes him off the case. We then tell Mizuki this and both agree to confront him together. But uh, there's kind of a lot of bodyguards around, so you know what time it is. Your favorite thing is on that island. Porno Mag! So the dynamic duo fight them off with Mizuki running on ahead. However, So grabs her as a hostage in another room and threw some things that would have Mythbusters shaking their heads. We shoot So and free Mizuki. However, he still got a gun. And if we shoot him, Shows what I know. You're meant to be a true dad and protect Mizuki. As we then get shot in the left eye, which doesn't harm Iva since she has cloud backup. Correct. However, so is still alive. Killed by your own father. Ah, you crazy old man. How do you like these fireworks? What? Date then falls into a coma, and you now play as Mizuki with Boss trying to tell you to get him to wake up. My heart was about to break, but... but because you were there, I was able to fight it. However, nothing is waking him, and Boss, who probably gets off saying it, tells Mizuki to sync with Date. So into his dreams, and you're probably thinking it's something, you know, but it's not. With memories of how Mizuki first arrived to live with him, and how Date tried so hard to be a caring father, and it's cute, and adorable, and yes, I cried shut up. And at the very end, you have to decide for Mizuki to pick either her parents or Date. Lomeo, easiest choice of my life, and thus Date wakes up. And so, happy ending, it feels the most complete at least. I mean, the Cyclops killer is dead. Who cares about the other mysteries, right? We're gonna go eat that terrible sushi you love. Really? Yay! So, that's a good place to end. Alright, fine, you've seen the video length. Please, at least for Mizuki, do it for her. Leave a like and comment, I'm going insane editing this. Well, now that lock path has opened up, the one with Iris's body in the forklift, so we head back there where Iba is consoling Date, but mentioning how the AC here was turned on for years to preserve a body. This isn't a new corpse, so it can't be Iris. And Date rushes back to examine it, and it has a swollen belly after pregnancy, since it takes a while after a baby is born to go back down. Meaning, this body has been frozen for at least 10 years. So is the likely suspect since we saw him leave and we ask him but he says nothing. Uh, big surprise, the dude barely gives any answer. I will also mention Iba has another radiation thing where she scans their temperatures and if it rises, they are lying. Well, I mean, what if they are warm just to do to being sick? So then Iba discusses leads with Date in the car. We could call her All Ice or Alice. What do you think? Now nah, that's a stupid name. And Mizuki mentions how Renju manages the warehouse himself, but doesn't let anyone go in. And one time she followed him, saw Alice in the forklift, but thought it was Iris, and so when she found out she was alive, she thought it was just a weird dream. Which also explains why that body appeared in Mizuki's Somnium earlier. She also mentions that he's been managing it for 18 years, and checking missing persons, Iba finds Monica Iwai, who was Atomi's best friend in high school, so time to sink her, yes, sink. Sink. I mean, you know, Date, it's not a euphemism. Oh, yeah? Pewter also gives us the example of how if we stay too long in the Somnium, your brains actually might switch and swap. You might swap bodies. Uh, I kind of wish that was in the fine print. Oh wait, it is. What the hell? So her Somnium is a dark forest and it's quite difficult to know where to go. But I love the little detail of this bit. Stop giving me orders! I didn't know you had all that bottled up. Sorry. And if you recheck the tree, Date has please on his orders now. It's the little things that make up life. Ah! Hitomi! Date likes Hitomi! Hey, what are you trying to say? So this seems to be a memory of what happened 18 years ago with younger Hitomi and Renju as they seemingly come across the Yakuza with the old boss Rohan burying Monica's body. Oh, is that... 
<laughs> oh, guess we know who was taking the eyes back then. So Hitomi reveals that Monica was So's mistress, which also explains why in his Somnium, he saw him killing Iris since she looks like her mother. They gave her a GPS tracker when she said she wanted to tell So about the pregnancy, and she left the baby with Hitomi. But they follow the GPS to find her body being buried. And Renji, who worked with the Yakuza before, told Hitomi to keep this a secret, otherwise they would come after them next. And apparently Renju knew of this murder, as when Monica met with So, he offered to pay for her to leave the country. But as she left, So's son Saito, who was 12, stabbed her repeatedly. So then asked Rohan to dispose of the body to cover up Risan's crimes. Wait, 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 wait. So had a son Saito, who killed someone at a age 12? Jesus, what a little gremlin! Hope we don't see him again. So yeah, the baby, which Sojima didn't know about, still survived, and now grew up with Hitomi, being Iris, who she loved like a daughter. Oh no, she's turning into a dog. But there's no statute of limitations for murder in Japan. Wait. You if mean Ace Attorney lied to me? We also learn about Iris's brain tumor, how there is actually an experimental treatment that could save her. Nano machines. <laughs> Nano machines. So that proves that this was never Iris's body. Then us saving her in the Somnium didn't shift timelines like we thought. So there's no such things as parallel worlds. Is that what you're saying, Iber? Is that what you're saying? But what about the flowchart, huh? What about the flowchart? So Atomi also mentions that someone called her today saying that they had Iris and would kill her if Atomi went to the police. All she had to do was bring Date along to the abandoned chemical plant, which Date somehow knows about. See, parallel worlds do exist. <laughs> I also decided to check up on the glossary again, as many terms that pop up the game will help explain them here, most of the time, with some amusing banter. Ha! Ah, Mormon bubbles! Uchi! You can't keep getting away with it! And also if you complete a Somnium with one second to go or find a hidden item, you get bonus photos, what the- 10 trillion sales! And I decided to check Monica's profile, her dislikes, Killing. Well, duh. However, Pewter going crazy again, orders Date to stop, but even after they escape, he begins to remotely delete all of Iba's data, her backups included, so they only have four hours to finish this. So in we go and find the prototype sync machine. Yes, that first iteration. Date checks it and finds Renju there with his left eye missing. Dead. Dude, come on! At least wipe down the machine after you finished using it! But then someone attacks Date from behind, and he looks up to see. Number 89. And then the root locks up again. Oh, come on, we're so close. We need even more context. All right, what's the final split? Well, it was back in Iris' Somnium, where instead of whacking the TV, you turn the knob, and it reveals a quite psychotic Somnium showing a blue guy murdering four women while a red man stands and watches. It's quite weird that Iris would know about these murders. She would have been 12 at the time, as it's seemingly the original Cyclops killing. And just as we end, we see in the glass a reflection of the original killer's face, which is... Date? Wait, okay, D dreams usually are jumbled up. Maybe Iris is mixing up our handsome mug with the killer, right? We aren't the killer. I mean, right? I mean, I, I know we lost that memory. You can't be the Cyclops killer. Really? Of course not. Do you think I would hire a serial killer? I don't know, Date is pretty hot. I mean, you could have overlooked it. Dream D equals memory A plus memory B plus memory C. That's a stupid equation. What are you doing? Oh god, no, I was kidding. I, I, I love bats. Well, Iris, what do you have to say? I don't know. Come on, Ivor. Whip out that lie detector heat gun thing. No, you're just gonna have forget how to use it now, huh? You know, maybe if you used all your features and didn't spend all day charging yourself, we would have solved the murder by now. Okay, I'm sorry, I won't complain. Well, if I have to. One little nitpick is so incredibly minor, but there were two instances where I found, uh, for some weird reason, the game didn't dub these lines, which was so noticeable when you're listening to all the dialogue. I'm in mind with state-of-the-art technology and research. Wow, uh, there's this one text instance that didn't match the audio. So was an Iris's Somnium. Like I said, I legit have no complaints about the game, but that's like all I could come up with. That... And the switchboard sucking. Well, we don't have any evidence to hold Iris, so we take her home. But she, while texting someone, asked us to stop at Marble. And we do so to find, ah, uh, no, the sim. And he says, whoa, look, someone behind you. Where? And shocks us with a taser, disabling Iba too. Oh, Ty, your mother wouldn't like what you're doing. Remember the other timeline? Five years later. 
Five years. Five hours later, we awake and boss calls us to say the new Cyclops killer is live streaming. With Iris once again on the bench. Oh, okay. It's the same thing as before. You know, the polar bear appears. Ota saves it and... No! That's just not a source, right? Right? What the hell? Ota's dead too! What's this route called? Annihilation route. Ah, I saved the most violent route for last, huh? Ah, yeah. Four funerals. And a wedding! So Boss and Date discuss what happened and try to work out who could be the killer. But it's like, who could it be? Maybe Renju, so. Shoko and so. There is a connection between Renju and Shoko through the- But again. I can't see any clear link to Iris. Come on, Date, you worked out he's a father in the other timelines. Tell him, Date! And yes, this route is way more serious with so many dead. You don't even get any Kanaya's a banter. Me. However, outside we run into Pewter who says, I got info on the original Cyclops, don't tell boss, as it was actually two people. A murderous psychopath who were due to a brain dysfunction who'd only feel happiness for murder, which started at age 12. Age 12. Who was age 12 we learnt about? Mizuki? What would happen if I put you in that box and then soaked it in gasoline and then lit it on fire? And the other person was Rohan who removed the eyeballs after death. As he had this weird fascination with dead woman eyeballs that the two would work together as the Cyclops killer. However, we know that Rohan is dead. He committed suicide last year and the other person? Well, Pewter says he's serving a life sentence in jail and is known as number 89. Anyway, this route is depressing. Mayumi blames us for Ota's death. Mizuki Yuki is so sad her parents and our two friends are dead, and Hitomi reminisces about Iris. She also says how she used to visit someone in prison, and one time she actually saw Shoko in the waiting room there. Well, we head back to the boss, but she's not here, and so we bring in 89 for questioning, and he's unhelpful as always. Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso! He asks to be the release, and then we'll tell his story. Date agrees, and so he says the story of Falco, who was a detective that eventually turned to vigilante justice killing criminals. However, one of his targets was part of the Kumakuras, so they captured him and said, work for us or you're dead. And so this carried on for years. Policeman by day, assassin by night, jazz player by evening. Until one day he missed and took a bullet to the stomach, where a woman at a shrine saved him and eventually Falco fell in love with her. Wait, fell in love? The murderer couldn't find love, so you're not the original Cyclops killer! I solved it! High five everyone! Oh, they're old. Dead. So for his love, who yes, okay, it's obvious, it's a Tomi. He told Rohan, all right, I'm done. I want to quit. Give me my last paycheck and I'll head out. Rohan said, fine, okay, just do one more hit. Kill this mother and daughter. And turns out it's Hitomi and Iris, oh, the irony, oh, the misery. However, he stops telling the story until we release him. Date says, lol, no, and sinks with him. Shame boss isn't here to say it. So this is quite a weird somnium because it's the same as the first room being Hitomi's house, but a little different. I'm beginning to think she ain't the brilliant AI I thought she was. You are like one of my limbs, Iba. Yes. Like an alter ego, an incarnation of me to kiss Hitomi. Yes. Then it's like me kissing Hitomi, right? No. You sure? Because that was making my heart rate rise. And another part of me too. Date is exceptionally horny when it comes to Hitomi. Well, I suppose I will try it. She's hard. Yeah, me too. Also, I'm not sure if this is in the other Somniums, but I found out here there's no real set order to progress the mental locks. There are like multiple things you can do to go forward, although I did have to retry quite a bit since the penalties take up so much time. Well, the dream ends with Rohan walking in and shooting 89, but Hitomi jumped in the way and took the bullet. And then we see Boz? What the hell? Okay, where is she? Please stay calm and listen. So Sejima's body was discovered. Wait, so he, he isn't the Cyclops killer, wasn't he in the polar bear expansion. uniform way? What the heck is going on here? So we try to find Boss, but her and her personality are nowhere to be seen. So Iba hacks into a computer and finds that a new video was recently uploaded and it shows someone killing so. And it's Boss? Boss? It was you all along? Maybe? I mean, she had no alibi for the murders. And Iba finds her location at Hitomi's place, the one person still alive in all this. So we rush there to find it empty. And as we turn around, Boss enters with a SWAT team, accusing us of being the new Cyclops killer. So Iba does what she does best. Date, 
What is that on the kitchen table? Can't be. Whoa! Limited edition! And we knock everyone out and drag boss back to be sing. And this Somnium is quite crazy. Like the hardest in the whole game. The time penalties are insane. You legit need to hold on to this one second timey to use here. Also, I forgot to mention there is a map, which I legit didn't even know about till this Somnium. And the minute I opened it, the game crashed. Gee, thanks. So yeah, I did look up a guide here. I mean, I didn't on my first playthrough. I couldn't, uh, so I got my gamer credit, okay? So don't complain. I mean, you can, but it's not that hard. It just requires a lot of trial and error if you can't work it out. And then memorizing what to do to optimize every time you reset. Well, this Somnium shows all the murder so far with the mysterious person. The hell is going on? And so we question boss, and you know, this is the big spoiler time. As Date realizes the new killer used the prototype sync machine, and this person is not boss, because the machine can let you swap bodies, and the killer was jumping between Shoko, Renju, Iris, so, and now boss, killing the previous host. And once this person realizes that we know, they reveal themselves. Yes. I am the culprit behind the new Cyclops serial killings. Oh my god, so I wasn't the killer, and neither was Mizuki. It was you, Saito. I'm telling you, it was me. Why are you making me repeat myself? So that's why Iris was acting different and her Somnium was insane. That was inside his mind. Saito was using their bodies to kill. He then asks though, how does Date know about the old sync machine? Since in this timeline, we shouldn't. But Date remembers Iris talking about parallel worlds and ah oh yeah, finally multiverse Date got through to him. Saito is also very open about his murder since he gets off on it and talks in detail about them all. How he first was in Shoko's body, where he called Renju over to the time machine, swapped bodies, and since the body you swapped with gets a stimulant injection, while the other gets a sedative, he was able to easily kill them. First Shoko's body with Renju's mind inside, and that's what happened at the start of the game. The Renju we knew as playing hide and seek was actually Saito running around doing his plan. And that is also why Ota seeing Iris driving the car, that was Saito in her doing the driving. And then when they drove to So's house, they brought him to the old machine, swapped, and then So kills Iris and Ota as the polar bear. Jeez, this sounds like that one future up episode. Episode. Then as so, he calls Boss over and swap before shooting him like in the video. And as to the eyes, well it can't be Rohan since he's dead and it's the wrong eye. Rohan had a brain injury and he couldn't see the left side of people's faces. No, the old machine was at fault, which is what we saw with Iris, where it doesn't have the tech of the new one. You know, with the cable slinking around the eye. No, you want to know what it does instead. You have to pop the left eyeball out still attached to insert the cables into the brain. Yes, the game does show this in Graphic detail, Mizuki, you're really working overtime tonight. However the game goes, yeah, you can just pop the eyeball back in afterwards. It's all normal if the wire is still connected. Okay. But Saito cut off each eye and ate them. So that's why Choco's eye was in Renju's stomach. He would eat the old eye in the new body every time he swapped. And he targeted all these people to get revenge against Date, as this was all to reach the end of his journey, his body. All you see, Saito's original body was Date's one you've seen the whole game. Yes, this handsome mug is Saito's original face. And if you're wondering, hey, wait, doesn't his brain have a deficiency? Wouldn't our main protagonist feel no love? And you know, he, he loves a lot of things. But that is why Iba would randomly mention his dosage. Perhaps we need to increase the dose. They were supplementing the missing chemical, meaning that Date, our player's character's real body, is actually number 89, Falco. The assassin. That's who we really are. No wonder he loves Atomi that much. And after explaining all this, Saito demands his body back, and Peter rushes in with a laptop. This is streaming live! It shows Atomi strapped with explosives! And Saito says, switch with him and he'll tell us the location. However, we don't negotiate with serial killers. Uh, we do negotiate with serial killers. So they swap. Saito <laughs> ecstatic is in his real body, and says she's at boss's house. And then you blow up! He never promised to stop the explosion. However, before he leaves, Iba zaps him before running over to us as Date wanders. Maybe there's another future with a different outcome where not all these people die. Well, buddy, you're playing an Uchikoshi game, so of course there is. And finally, we go back to that timeline where Iba is getting mind wiped. And we find Renju used up on the old machine with number 
89 standing over us, who we now know is Saito. Where this Saito in this timeline, his plans didn't work out. As since we saw Monica's body in Mizuki's Somnium, remember we then called Iris and said, don't answer the door for anyone and in return will give you a date. Well, turns out Saito and Renju's body wanted to pick her up to swap with her, but due to our actions, he wasn't able to, and then got into a car crash, leaving him badly injured. A single decision changed the timeline, which is why his new plan was to use Pewter to get 89 out of jail, who Rohan's mind was in at the time. Wait, wait, Rohan now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, this is getting, okay. This is getting quite confusing. The game does explain this nicely over its 25 hours, but you know, this is one video. We don't have that luxury. So you know what? It's time for the good old fashioned RAM timeline breakdown where I do all these graphics and stuff that is sometimes doing videos. Oh, please God, I hope it makes sense. Hey, girl, it's been a while. Okay, so the head represents the brain of that person, their consciousness, and I'll show whose body they are jumping into in that body, if that makes sense. So at the start of the game, you have the old Cyclops killings with Saito and Rohan killing and grabbing eyeballs. So Date as Falco the policeman and boss arrest Rohan. This is because Rohan ordered Date to kill Hitomi and Iris for all that Monica stuff. Boss then tells Date the only way to stop the Yakuza killing them is to swap with Rohan and order it as the boss that no one shall touch them. Date knew this meant he would never see them again, but he did it because he loved them very much. However, after the swap, Rohan and Date's body runs off to Hitomi's house to finish the job, which is that scene we saw. Rohan is here to kill Hitomi. But Date, in Rohan's body, comes in with the boss to stop them and shoots at Rohan, however Hitomi jumps in the way. Because she thought that was her boyfriend, but in fact, her boyfriend accidentally shoots her. Boss and the police then arrest Rohan and give him a life sentence, using all the crimes Date did as Falco over the years, since the court thinks this is Falco getting put into jail. So then in he goes and given the number designation, 89. However, Date in Rohan's body gets kidnapped by Saito who figures out that his killer friend isn't acting like himself, so through torture finds out from him about sinking. And so Saito steals that prototype sink machine and swaps with him. However, this is an old machine, so Date, now inside Saito's body, loses all his memories and escapes. Where he wanders the streets and gets taken in by boss to work for her again as Kaname Date. Abyss agent, a new persona. And it's also why boss is kinda cagey and not telling the details of what happened six years ago. Saito is now in Rohan's body but is mentally broken. However, over time he rebuilds his memories, plotting to get his body back, and calls Shoko to the plan using her connection to his gang, forcibly swapping with her. And Shoko waking up freaks out in Rohan's body and commits suicide, which is reported everywhere that Rohan died, yet he is still actually alive in prison as 89. Now, Hitomi would visit 89 thinking it's her boyfriend, but it's Rohan and he's playing along with this, and that's also where Hitomi saw Shoko since this was Saito meeting up with his buddy Rohan, both in different bodies. Ah, oh, cool dude, you got tits now. <laughs> And so begins the murders. Renju gets called by Saito Shoko, killed and swapped. Saito going as Renju, tries to grab Iris but due to us warning her, isn't able to and badly injures the body in a car crash. Now after breaking out of hospital, he tries again to get Iris, but she runs away. So he finally calls Pewter to help break number 89 out of jail. And at the same time, Hitomi was planning on using Monica's death to blackmail So to get money for the piano machines treatment for Iris' brain tumor. This is why she called So to the warehouse house and displayed Monica's body to scare him with the evidence still here. Which is where Date walked in upon the scene before Hitomi could do anything, and then when he left Hitomi hid the body, which is why the police couldn't find it. So Saito Renju swaps with Rohan 89, putting him in the almost dead Renju because of the car crash injuries, and using 89 and the knowledge that this is Iris' most trusted person, since swapping you get 1% of the person's memories and you talk like them, which is why Iris left that note that she was with the person she trusted the most, thinking it was her uncle. Ironically, her uncle was us the whole time, you know, just lost his memories. So yeah, hopefully that explains everything up to this point. Like I said, the game does a good job explaining it all. Even things get discussed after this event, like how So talked to us despite the fact that we are in his son's body. It was because after Boss rescued us, she went over and said, Hey, I'll take your son up your hands. Not many people know what he looks like. Don't worry, just keep quiet and I won't mention how he's the original Cyclops killer. He happily agreed since his killer son would be out of his life and you know he can be a politician and do all that other stuff. Which is also why he was probably annoyed that 
that he saw us coming back to ask him questions. So now that's the true ending timeline and we end up here. Renju and Shoku both dead, Rohan also gone, with Saito and Date's body, and us in his, with him holding all the cards. So he goes to get his body back by putting us to sleep and taking Iba out. He then rips his own eye out and sinks. Now this Somnium, I thought it could have been cooler than it was, but it was kinda slow and you couldn't really fail, you just follow the instructions. I personally thought it could have been cooler if I had like a 1v1 situation, Saito trying to break the locks down and you building up the fences, eventually losing to him. But instead, we got... And so we awake in our original body, missing an eye. Saito puts Iba in not knowing what she is, and gloats how he will kill Iris and Itomi in front of us. While the game gives us a flashback to our whole life that I explained, showing us with Iris. When will Uncle be my dad? Iris, this isn't Hamlet. And we learn that our real name is not Falco, but Hayato Yagyu. I thought it was best to mention here, at least, and not earlier, which might have confused you. But just before Saito kills us, who should come to the rescue? I don't know who. Uh, another polar bear? <laughs> no, don't be silly. It's the simp, the Yakuza one with the gun. Who chases Saito off as Iba had contacted him, describing what was happening. Date chases after Saito and finds him holding Iris captive. But before he shoots, Mizuki attacks Saito. Saito. While Ota frees Iris, they were all called over by Aiba. Saito though grabs his gun and shoots Mizuki in the leg, and Date and Saito pull off some punches you knew they wished they had motion capture for. And after punching the handsome face over a container, the group huddle together and discuss how Aiba called them all together because they didn't actually know she existed up until this point. We kept it all a secret. And Iris now knows that we are the uncle she was looking for the whole time. But we look up and see Saito now holding his Tomi hostage, and the gang rush upstairs but Saito says to drop the gun or he will kill her. So we drop it and Saito laughs, laughs, now saying he will kill us all. But Ota gets a call from who else? But Aiba, who says for Date the only way is to order the self-destruct. Remember that thing we set up ages ago? So Date enters the code, followed by the second one, which is him telling a lie. I hate you, Aiba. I hate you, and I never want to see you again. And so Iba explodes and they show it in all its gory detail. The handsome mug gone, Saito dead. It's finally over! And so we get an epilogue, which you love to see in these type of games, where you go to each area to get closure with all the characters and see what they're doing now. Where it's three months later, we see Iris is all good, her surgery successful. Boss told the higher ups that she and Hitomi will keep quiet about all the Cyclops stuff if the police paid for the surgery. Boss is... herself. Volley reminds me of a valley, like cleavage. And of course, ball is self-explanatory. Isn't it kind of dirty? Yeah, don't worry, she isn't all that. Pon poco pon! Pon poco pon! And weirdly, she knocks Date out and telling him it's a surprise, but we wake up in the sink room with Pewter. Pewter was arrested for his role helping Renju and was only brought out of jail here to do something for boss. Sojima then lost his job as a congressman and was planning to leave the country. Soon I won't be able to live in this country anymore. I'll retire to an island somewhere and live the rest oh, of my days. Oh no, stay in away. We don't, we don't want you here, so. And you visit Hitomi with Iris really hoping that we'll hook up to be her dad that she always wanted. Date apologizes for shooting Hitomi in the arm, but she knew we were trying to defend her. And I will say it's kind of bittersweet, because I don't know, man, I kind of miss the Saito voice and face for the epilogue. We grew accustomed to the face and voice alongside the Iba banter, since now he has a glass eye, and I don't know, this new Date just feels less horny. <laughs> well, there's that. Guess no matter the body swaps, the kinks remain. So we officially adopt Mizuki, who has now inherited Lemniscate, and try one more time with the best character. Hold me tight, hold me tight! Oh, my good fellow. Feeling a bit worse for wear, are you? Worry not. I shall embrace you. No, not you! And he prays Ota in front of his doting mother, and we see the Yakuza guys are all converted into ASAT fans, and... I am living! Yeah, moving on. Mama says how the public, all they know is that Renju killed Shoko, 89 escapes prison to kill Renju, and commit suicide. And somehow it's just a coincidence our surgery makes us look like him. And so we end up at the Harbour District, where Iris says to close her eyes. And when we open, who's there? Oh no, not the polar bear! Oh wait, it's just Iba. So this was a surprise boss plan. Iba says how her data was stored around the globe and slowly was able to come back. It was the Wadget system that brought me back to life. Hey, don't mention that. Iris might go tinfoil again. There yeah, everything is back to normal and the game ends it all with a dance number. Oh, 
killing it. Damn, this game is amazing. And so yes, that was AI the Somnium Files. One of my favorite recent games ever, made by a small team and yet has blown me away with the amount of love and care put in the game. From the way it slowly unravels the multi-timeline mystery, giving you so many twists and turns, to the outstanding voice acting, which honestly made this game so much better for me, to even the most atmospheric music to match the scene. Yes, I know I music is kind of subjective and thing, but it just really fits the scene so well. To then giving us all these characters I love very much. Like I've said before, I rarely cry in video games, and this was the one that joined the exclusive list, and it's probably more exclusive because it happened again while I replayed it. There's just so much feels. It's honestly absurd how this niche game was able to do all this with a point and click genre, with its presentation, and if they make more games of this quality, or higher, I can easily see this franchise being one of my all time favorites. Like, come on, Ace Attorney, just that voice acting, please, it works so well here. And yes, I still left out quite a few things. Don't think I showed you all the funny moments if you want to play this for yourself. I highly recommend it. More people need to try out this game, and if you do, just remember this dumb YouTuber told you about it. And hopefully this game is a good way to catch you up for the sequel, which stars Mizuki as the protagonist, and honestly, I can't wait. I don't think I'll do a video on it on this channel soon, but I might have something planned in another channel, which I'll link in the end card and description whenever that's out. So keep an eye out for it, get it? Get it? <laughs> Okay, wait now. Uh, hang on. Oh. You're waiting. Uh, I'll just go, okay? Because I believe I have a date with a beautiful big character on the beach. Now this is living. Trojan, Ramses, Magnum, Sheik! Hey, just wanted to say thank you for still watching after this super long video. I'm just one guy making all this. Would really appreciate any support on Patreon with a link in the description, or you can find me at www.patreon.com forward slash.